Hello everyone, I am Munjishnu Vishash, a research scholar in the Department of Civil Engineering at IIT Guwahati. The purpose of this mini lecture series uh, arranged by Adrita Ardrubhumi, team Adrita Ardrubhumi is to create a general platform of knowledge sharing by inviting lectures from different peoples, uh, from different fields who are working with wetlands in several aspects. So today, the, the, the discussion topic in this lecture will be on engineering aspects of constructed wetlands or engineered wetlands and how they are being used for environmental remediation. So just let's start. So the topic is engineered wetlands for environmental remediation. So throughout this lecture, we'll go through uh, the water crisis in India and see the current scenario. Introduction to engineered wetlands, which is also called as the constructed wetlands. History and evolution of constructed wetlands. How can we classify constructed wetlands in different aspects? What are the strategies and techniques for performance enhancement of constructed wetlands? And why do we need these techniques to enhance the performance? We will discuss. The recent trends in constructed wetland research. And finally, we shall conclude the discussion. India has to support 17.7% of total world population with only 4% of global fresh water storage. Now let's see how bad is the water crisis in India. A timeline focused by uh, Composite Water Management Index of Niti Aayog says in 2019, everybody knows Chennai almost has run out of water. By 2020, 21 cities including Delhi, Hyderabad, Bengaluru will run out of water. In 2030, 40% of Indians will have no access to drinking water. And in 2040, there will be no drinking water in almost all of India. Now, the, what is the process or what is the way to mitigate this scenario? One way it could have could be happening that uh, we just uh, treat our wastewater that we generate every day and reuse that wastewater. Now, let's see what is the scenario of treatment of wastewater in India. India have 30% sewage treatment capacity of what it generates on daily basis. Now, this graph shows the comparison of wastewater generation and treatment capacity in India. This is for metropolitan cities. The wastewater generation per day is around 12 to 13,000 MLT, that is million liters per day, where the treatment capacity is nearly 10,000. Sorry, nearly 5,000. In class one cities, the generation is nearly 33 to 34,000 MLT, whether the whereas the treatment capacity is below 10,000. And class two cities, the generation is nearly 1,000 to 1,500 MLT and treatment capacity is very less. So uh, in order to reuse the sewage, uh, the wastewater that is generated in India, we still need to go a long way. And by that way, if we need to uh, mitigate the water crisis in India, still there is a long way to go. Now let us talk about uh, constructed wetlands and we'll discuss how can constructed wetlands be an effective tool to mitigate this scenario. So what a constructed wetland is, it is nothing but a shorter control, shorter, shorter volume of a natural wetlands whose objective is to emulate the natural purification processes which is already existing in a natural wetland. But in a, in a short reactor volume, what we basically try is to like uh, re reassess or monitor those treatment methodologies or treatment mechanism and uh, execute them in a faster rate and in a controlled way if possible in an optimal manner. Now the main removal mechanisms uh, in constructed wetland is filtration, adsorption, absorption, sedimentation, plant uptake, microbial degradations which basically happen in this particular reactor volume simultaneously, which makes this technology a very interesting and very effective tool for treatment of wastewater. But the main problem uh, of this, that this is a black box technology and a global model for constructed wetland is still not available because it is very difficult to assess uh, the individual mechanisms and the extent of contribution that they have for, treat, for treatment of a particular wastewater. Say, if in a control volume or if in a constructed wetland, I have three processes, filtration, adsorption, absorption. But it is very difficult for a researcher or for a person to 
quantify the extension of contribution each mechanism is having on a particular wastewater treatment. So that is why it is a black box technology and it has been so difficult to create a model for assessing the performance of a wetland system, constructed wetland system rather. Now the advantages of constructed wetland is it is a green technology, power consumption is really zero, their operation and maintenance cost is high, such production is zero and the design and construction is simple, which makes this system very attractive. But one drawback is they require large amount of land area for obtaining high system efficiency and uh, uh, for treating a high strength wastewater, for example, dependent industrial wastewaters, it should be preceded by a conventional wastewater treatment scheme so as to attain a good effluent from the constructed wetlands. In this uh, image, you can see the different uh, mechanisms of pollutant removal that uh, is carried out that uh, that is carried out in a reactor of constructed wetland. Most uh, mechanisms are taking place in this root zone, or which is also called the rhizome network of the macrophytes. Let's go to the history and evolution. Constructed wetland was first introduced in the environmental engineering arena by Keith Seidel. It was in 1960s. As you can see in the figure, before 1960s, wastewater treatment was limited to physical, chemical, and biological methods. After the arrival of the, the scientist, this Keith Seidel, she described how wastewater, uh, marsh plants or macrophytes can be applied to treat wastewaters, and then constructed wetland was introduced as a brand new technique and several scientists since then started to apply or started to uh, explore the capacity of constructed wetlands for treating different kinds of wastewater. Since 1960s to till 2020, constructed wetlands has been gradually applied for treatment of uh, simple wastewater to uh, gradually complex wastewater and recalcitrant wastewaters as well. This figure shows how it has gradually increased the, the application arena, the application and how currently it is applied for treating several kind of wastewater. Initially, it was only applied for improvement of inland waters. Then gradually uh, scientists and engineers started applying this technique to domestic wastewater, daily wastewater treatment, agricultural runoff treatment. And currently we can see fertilizer plant effluents and recalcitrant uh, pollutants like pesticides, veterinary antibiotics are also being started, being started to treat in a constructed wetland. Let's see the classification of constructed wetlands. So initially constructed wetlands can be classified depending on the macrophytes used. They can be constructed using a free floating, uh, free floating plants, floating leaved plants, emergent macrophytes and submerged macrophytes. The reactors which are configured with an emergent macrophyte can further be classified as a surface flow or a subsurface flow wetland. In a surface flow wetland, the flow of water is open to atmosphere, whether it's a subsurface flow water, uh, subsurface flow reactor, the water flow it doesn't come up to the atmosphere and it is always underground. The, su the subsurface flow wetlands can be further classified as vertical flow and horizontal flow wetland. Vertical flow wetlands can furtherly be classified as downflow and upflow wetlands. And the hybrid system is an integrated version combining a vertical flow and a horizontal flow unit. In this picture, you can see uh, in this slide, you can see different pictures of different combinations and different configuration of wetlands. This is a horizontal surface flow constructed wetland. You can see the flow is open to atmosphere here. This is a horizontal subsurface flow constructed wetland where the flow is underground. This is a vertical subsurface flow constructed wetland. This is a vertical surface flow constructed wetland. And at the bottom of the screen, we can see a hybrid constructed wetland, which is a combination of vertical and horizontal treatment units. So let's talk about constructed wetland and their use and application about decentralized wastewater treatment. The necessity of decentralized wastewater treatment is currently the central STPs are failing to cope up with the demand 
and they are not uh, giving up the desired level of output that is expected from them because we, as we have seen in the very first slide that only 30 percent of wastewater that is generated in india can be treated with the central stps so we can see that in order to mitigate the water crisis that is faced by india currently decentralized wastewater treatment schemes are the need of the hour now the most uh, important characteristics of a decentralized wastewater treatment that they should be economical. One, they should be economical. Two, they should be eco-friendly. And three, there should not be any uh, carbon footprint or carbon footprint left or after like file operation, there should not be any carbon footprint left by the treatment unit. And constructed wetlands have both of them. Constructed wetlands are a cost-effective system and an eco-friendly technology and can serve as an effective decentralized wastewater treatment tool that has been already been successfully applied in several nations such as Brazil, China, USA, etc. But in India, the main problem and the main drawback of constructed wetland is they require a large area footprint in order to get a, a good quality of effluent from a wetland constructed wetland system. It requires greater hydraulic retention time, which in turn increases the area requirement and in India land is not cheap and it is not easily available in order to install a constructed wetland treatment scheme. So in the figure we can see the main drawbacks of constructed wetlands. One is which is the most important is the large area footprint requirement. Uh, slow rate of treatment due to predominance of anaerobic zone and the biological components are vulnerable to toxicity which uh, makes constructed wetland not applicable for treating toxic and highly polluted industrial wastewaters. So that particular scenario necessitates to find out the new strategies and new techniques for performance enhancement. I have broadly classified the performance techniques, uh, performance enhancement techniques which has been adopted by different researchers throughout the globe as uh, design modification, change in operational mode and integration with other technologies. Design modification example is Tawari hybrid constructed wetland where we can make the uh, constructed wetland as a tower. Uh, uh, circular flow corridor constructed wetland in this, uh, this will uh, the water moves up and down vertically up and down alternatively in separate chambers in a circular way. Baffled constructed wetlands, so in a wetland we put baffles so as to uh, elongate the path of the flow path of the water and increase the HRT. Change in operation, step feeding. This is basically done in order to uh, supply more organics in throughout the flow path. Effluent recirculation. This works as an inoculum to bacterial population and constructed wetlands with bio racks which serve as a greater area which uh, serves the area requirement for the biological attached load system. Integration with other technologies has been the most recent trend of wetlands. Example of this is MFC CW, that is microbial fluvial cell combined with a constructed wetland. CW SBR, that is constructed wetland combined with a sequential batch reactor. And this is constructed wetland combined with an upflow anaerobic sludge bracket reactor. In this image, we can see how constructed wetland has been integrated with separate other technologies so as to uh, serve different purpose of uh, wastewater treatment. For uh, organic and nitro organic and nutrient removals, we can see it has been combined with NBR, uh, electrochemical oxidation and anaerobic digesters. For toxic pollutant treatment, it has been combined with anaerobic digesters, electrolysis, photocatalysis and so on. Now the recent research trends in constructed wetland is as already I have already discussed the integration of constructed wetlands with several other remediation standalone technologies so as to these two technologies can work as a synergy and they can overcome the individual drawback of different technologies and different reactors. So this image shows uh, integration of uh, microbial fuel cell with the constructed wetland and this combination also known as integrated microbial enhanced technology wetlands or IMETLAND and has been the most recently emerged technology since 2012 and at the center of attraction of 
environmental scientists and engineers. This system basically gives an additional advantage of energy harvesting at the external circuit whenever wastewater is applied in this reactor. This figure shows integration with several other technologies. This is a MBR uh, that is a, a membrane bioreactor combined with a constructed wetland. As you can see, membrane bioreactor removes the suspended solids initially so as it can uh, mitigate the clogging problem in a constructed wetland, constructed wetland reactor. Here you can see a uh, UASPR system that is anaerobic sludge blanket reactor preceded to a constructed wetland reactor so as to reduce the load organic load on a constructed wetland and to uh, produce more good quality effluent. This is a combination of a sequential batch reactor with constructed wetland and this image shows a combination of biodac uh, system of constructed wetland which is in biodac is installed in it so that the attached growth system attached growth of microbes can be provided. So let's move to the conclusion of the future and the future scope of the wetland systems and how they can be like adopted in Indian scenario. The main problem is the disadvantage that is associated with the area requirement of a constructed wetland. And uh, if we talk about the integrated systems, there are several uh, background still is uh, several drawbacks of integrated systems still exist among them. As you can see, the integrated systems take, uh, still lag large scale applications and large scale implementations. Most of the integrated systems are still on a lab scale or bean scale studies. And for step feeding, uh, for in step feeding methodology, there is always a possibility to re of reoccurring the pollutants that has been initially been removed by the constructed wetland. And constructed wetland now can be the most effective tool in hand to save our inland surface waters and to mitigate the water crisis in India. But still there is a long way to go in order to like uh, establish this constructed wetland system in a fully fledged decentralized wastewater treatment scheme. So there is still many, uh, many fields to explore, many uh, design and configurations to assess and many researches are still to be done. So hopefully uh, with, the, with uh, the amount of interest that is currently growing with constructed wetlands, very soon the researchers and environmental engineers will be able to model the constructed wetland and uh, establish it as a fully fledged treatment unit. Thank you.